What I'd like to do in this brief discussion is reflect from the perspective of the rule of law about certain statements made by leading political figures in Australia with respect to the disclosure of the WikiLeaks documentation. The statement that got me interested in the whole issue was the first made by Australia's Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, when the first tranche of WikiLeaks documents exposing the US State Department discussions and observations came forward. And what Julia Gillard said at the time, and I'm quoting her, is, I absolutely condemn the disclosure of this information on the WikiLeaks website. It is a grossly irresponsible thing to do and an illegal thing to do. Now, um, from a civil liberties perspective, it's remarkable to me that the Prime Minister should have delivered this statement with that measure of certainty. It's remarkable for the following reasons. First, the statement was made in the absence of identifying any law, whether Australian or international, that had been broken. Uh, it was made without any investigation having been conducted by the Australian Federal Police as to whether any offence had been committed. Uh, it was made without the undertaking uh, or completion of investigation by the US Attorney General's Department as to the WikiLeaks disclosures. It was a statement made in the absence of any charge having been laid against Mr Assange or the WikiLeaks organisation. Uh, it was made in the absence of Mr Assange having been given any opportunity to respond to allegations of illegality, uh, whether made within Australia or in the United States. Uh, and finally, it was uh, a statement made in the absence of any trial before any properly constituted court, whether here or in the United States. Now, the effects of that statement were potentially serious. Um, they were serious because they tended to deny Mr. Assange the presumption of innocence. Uh, they clearly prejudiced his prospects of fair trial in Australia and possibly uh, in the United States. Uh, and they were statements that preempted the outcome of any legal proceedings by, in effect, declaring him guilty of offences unidentified in advance. Uh, the response of the Australian Attorney General was almost as bad. The Attorney General, Robert McClelland, uh, began his intervention by saying that if Mr Assange came back to Australia and had broken any law, then he wouldn't be welcome. Uh, he then made a further, even more startling claim, which was that even if Mr Assange hadn't broken any law, his passport may finally be cancelled. Now, here, a person's passport can be cancelled in Australia only if the relevant statutory criteria are met. The final decision isn't for the Attorney General. It's a decision that would need to be made by the relevant Commonwealth authorities on the basis of certain statutory criteria. But the idea that the Attorney could order his department or the Immigration Department, simply to remove Mr Assange's passport is uh, quite astonishing and, again, a statement that takes uh, that step uh, well beyond our recognition of what is required by Australian law. Next, the Attorney made it clear that even in the absence of uh, any evident breach of Australian law, Australia would support any law enforcement action taken in the United States. What he said was, the United States will be the lead government in this respect, but certainly Australian agencies will assist. Well, how could he possibly make such a statement when no charge had been initiated and no law had yet been identified as uh, one that Mr Assange or the WikiLeaks organisation may have been committed? The other thing about uh, the attorney's statement was, we might well ask, why would we be helping to hunt down Mr Assange on behalf of the United States, seemingly in the absence either of a law or substantial evidence 
that any offence had been committed. So those statements um, were extraordinarily prejudicial and had the effect of attacking um, Julian Assange's fundamental human rights as they are recognised uh, not just in the United Kingdom and the United States, but also here in Australia. It was an exceptionally strong response, but legally speaking, an exceptionally ill-informed response. As far as I know, she hasn't made any official statement to say I was wrong. It was just a little watered down, wasn't it, a couple of days later? It, it was watered down a little bit uh, later. Uh, what she said a couple of days later was, um, well, it's clear that uh, an illegal act has been committed um, uh, and the illegal act was the initial disclosure of the documents. Yes, it was based on an illegal act, I think that's what that's, she said, yeah, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> what about the New York Times? Don't they publish things that were yeah. based on an illegal act? <laughs> well, of course, um, that's the other thing that I neglected to mention. I mean, if they're going to go after WikiLeaks, um, then they have to, for the purposes of consistency, um, go after the New York Times, The Guardian, El Pais, uh, Le Monde, and uh, all of the other international newspapers that published uh, in parallel. That's right. And, that, and I think that's why uh, it was awfully uh, disappointing when the New York Times tried to claim that uh, Julian Assange was a source rather than a journalist. But uh, he's had a nice little walkly since and, uh, yeah. you know, he's had his press card for a long, long time. So I think that doesn't hold water either. But it was a very, a very dirty trick that they played on him. Um, Andrew Fowler seems to think that that's jealousy. And uh, from the governments, that's fear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, in both cases. And I think, you know, panic reactions shouldn't be seen from leaders. They should talk to people like you before they well, make statements. You know, it, would, it would be handy <laughs> if the Prime Minister, who is a lawyer, and the Attorney General, who is a lawyer, um, uh, had uh, had a bit of a look at the law before they burst into print about all of these things because they were quite uh, wrong on in almost every facet of what they said in 